Hey, do you like your day ruined? Well, too bad. I guarantee it was if you watched this atrocity. And if this war crime didn't make you choose violence, I will. Now I was done with this Megamind video and I was exporting the edit when it happened. I googled the show for information because of the down mid credit scene. For context, I went into this movie after watching like a minute of the trailer. I had no idea it existed and ignorance was truly bliss. So I went on to watch it and let's just say here we are. Googling the movie was a big mistake because of two pieces of information I discovered that changed everything. If you don't choose violence after the second, are you even human? Think about the children. But if you do, comment what was your trigger. I'm your African NPC, and today, I choose violence. Now because I'm nice, Let's have a look at the first piece of this puzzle. Once again, more Mega Mind content I wasn't aware of. But this, this was good. The animated short picks up on Mega Mind's first day as defender of Metro City. He's having a yard sale of his evil inventions and you don't need a genius to tell you this was a bad idea. Anyway, after selling off most of the stuff, a certain button is installed. Megamind pushes the button and it releases a robot called The Mega Megamind! Oh no! I transferred my evil personality into a giant robot. White suit, white king, if it isn't my old friend, Metromind. <laughs> he thinks you're Metro Man. Well, I am Defender of Metrocity now. This is the perfect time for me to debut my super suit. So Megamind goes about stopping this robot in what I can only describe as typical Megamind. Marco! Polo! Oh no! <laughs> <sighs> Classic. I like this. Now, if I had seen the animated short when it came out, I would have been optimistic and looking forward to the next installment in the franchise. But I didn't see it back then. And 13 years later, we got this. I see friends who frankly should put some pants on and venture outside occasionally. And I've got to say in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. This movie is an assault on each and every one of your brain cells. Not that you'll have any after watching this. As a matter of fact, here's your brain HP before watching this video. And by the end, let's see how much is left. Right from the jump, we break the fourth wall. Like me, you probably never thought this day would come. At this point, I wish it didn't. Anyway, only one minute of this movie is good. And it's a recap of the first movie. After that, we jump over to a heist going down in the city. And oh boy. What broke me wasn't whatever this is. This song is copyrighted. I must replace it. This song is copyrighted. I can't include it. Yeah, you know I just got hit with a claim. I find that rather lame. Or this. Wanted to play Elvis Presley, then they took it all away. Guess I'll just It's the scene. Mute the song. But wait, there's something wrong. Hey man, what's wrong? Tell us, I need to know what's hell. I forgot how to breathe. Oh. This song is copyrighted. I must replace it. This song is copyrighted. I can't include it. This song is copyrighted. What? I must replace it. This song is copyrighted. What the I can't include it. This song is copyrighted. I must replace it. This song is copyrighted. I can't include it. Yeah, you know I just got hit with a claim. I find that 
rather lean Wanted to play Elvis Presley Then they took it all away Guess I'll just move the song But wait then Did you see it? No? Come here Why did Megamind throw the cube? Only to jump on the tank <gasps> See here? The tank The vending cart The people After the cut See how this lady and these kids didn't run, and the tank is mere meters away. Unless you're Barry Allen and you happen to be in Metro City, these people have been isekai. Obviously, the movie has other ideas. First, we teleport to before the crosswalk. Again, these people are going to start a new life in a new world. Megamind finally decides to take action. This leads to more teleportation and this time of the vending cart. And family? Oh. Now the lady and kids teleport to the crosswalk and the cart is in the middle of the intersection. And in the next shot it's gone again? Oh. Not to mention it wasn't hit? Oh. Bro, what the fuck? I'ma need a lot of brain bleach after this. Anyway, we move to a press conference where Roxanne says this. Roxanne Ritchie, reporting on the accomplishments of others. Huh. Roxanne, it's a job. Literally. You're a reporter. Usually I'd let this go as characterization, but in this universe, it's been two days since Titan was defeated. If anything, she should be knee deep in reporting every aspect of the events of the last few days. And Minion quits? Kinda? Look, it's manufactured tension, and it feels like it's been 13 years for both these characters doing these jobs. Even the jokes. Have the brain bots program an algorithm for a surefire negotiation speech. Are you sure about that? That right there is a chat GPT <gasps> joke that doesn't fit in this world. In all this, we meet Keiko Morita, president of Megamind's number one streaming online fan club, Megawatch. It's been two <gasps> days. How is there a fan club? <gasps> number one fan, sure, but. A few weeks ago, I was a middle schooler sitting in detention. Now, I'm streaming a show with a half million subscribers. Yeah, did you say half a million? How? Us girls gotta have our secrets, am I right? I hate you. Ooh. Back to Megamind receiving the key to the city. Whoa there, Mr. Mayor. I know this show doesn't look very good, but damn, you look like an afterthought. Anyway, Keiko meets Megamind. And it goes exactly how you would expect the conversation to go. Megamind, I'm Keiko Morita, president of your fan club. President? Oh, I have nothing but respect for those who assume power. Then you'll love this. I'm also your new social media manager, streaming content creator, and image consultant. Those are a lot of words I don't understand. Honestly, how old is this girl? Meh, not important. What is, though, is the Doom Syndicate. After Megamind himself and Titan, we've had some good villains in this franchise. The Doom Syndicate, on the other hand, <gasps> tremble as you gaze upon the frightening sight of Lord 99. <gasps> <laughs> so we have Discount Storm, <gasps> an international hire because Mexicans are always <gasps> used, a sentient pile of rocks, <gasps> and a TJ Miller impressionist. <gasps> They're in prison and they escape to meet up with Megamind. And this escaped my guy. First off, no prison uniforms? <coughs> hmm. Second, they just scheme in the loudest voices ever. Hey, do me glues! No scheming <coughs> during lunch! Third, I'm no prison warden, but putting your prison control room in the prison is just asking for trouble. <coughs> Fourth, can Frenchie teleport? What about Behemoth? Here now and gone in the next shot. Oh. Really? Oh. Are you fucking serious? This, this, this is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much oh. cancer that I can feel the tumors grow. Hey, seriously, these gods make mall cops look like FBI agents. Where are they running to? Oh. So let me get this straight. You did all that. Opened a whole entire door. 
only to break the side wall? Hey yo, what the fuck? I think I should write a will. Anybody know a good lawyer? Oh wait, I'm African. My family will fight over my positions anyway. I hope those popcorn need help. So since Minion left Megamind, he can't take care of himself and calls Roxanne with an emergency, which is him unable to use a toaster. Are you telling me a genius can't use a toaster? <coughs> if you burn food, fine. Or made some nasty food, like Roxanne later does, cool. Not everyone is a chef. But to tell me Megamind doesn't even know that you have to plug in the fucking toaster? Are you mental? <coughs> anyway, all that was to get Roxanne to the lair so that she can be there when the Doom Syndicate arrives. Apparently Roxanne and Discount Storm know each other. Is it important to the plot? Of course not. It's all set up for a lame joke. Hell, if Roxanne defeated her at the end or something, it would be worth it. But nah. So the idiot quartet is here to complete some plan Megamind came up with back when he was evil. They believe he's playing hero and all this is part of some evil scheme. There's no way Megamind could be real hero. That would be great betrayal and cause much anger in Behemoth. <laughs> but you're not so Behemoth happy. Oh. Behemoth has to be burning everything around him, right? If not... Unfortunately, his temperature is like his intelligence. Selective. So, before they execute phase 2 of the plan, they go out for... Wait, how did you put it? I say we break in Megamind City with a good old-fashioned crime spree. Yeah! yeah, that. Megamind and Roxanne try to come up with a plan to stop them. While all this is going down, Mian is looking for a job. I'm proficient in robotics, neuroscience, chemical engineering, death ray construction, bioengineering, and event planning. So anything in those areas. I'm looking for a toilet scrubber. <laughs> 2024 job market, am I right? Anyway, Megamind goes after the four stooges to try and minimize the damage they cause. Discount Storm flexes her power and what's that? He was hungry! Okay, go rob some takeout joint. Ooh, is this how they get to Minion? <laughs> what kind of wood is that? Ooh. Easy one, Wakanda. I just want to talk to him. Wait. You're all under arrest! Where are the Isekai boomsticks? Ooh. They have superpowers, you know? What are you gonna do with them torches? Illuminate their crimes? And Christ on a bike, how does one solder wood? <coughs> and is lava something you can wipe off with a cloth? <coughs> in all this chaos, guess who literally walks in and immediately needs saving? You guessed it. Keiko. <coughs> and she's not the only one making a return. Welcome back, teleportation. <coughs> so the Quattro Idiotas get Megamind to rob a bank. And he pretends to do so while they argue about who is leader. He told Behemoth leader should go by height and girth. Hey buddy, apparently it's your length. I mean... What did he say? After the whole crime spree shenanigans, the four wastes of oxygen throw a party to celebrate launching phase 2 the next day. Which Megamind didn't agree to since he's stalling for time. The fish gang from earlier shows up and tries to expose Megamind. They are stopped by a dance battle and not getting to the mic in time to announce it. How about you tell like any one of these guys? He'll tell the next and he'll tell the next and he'll tell the next. Then boom, you exposed him. This was pretty cool though. And if I have to explain it, this movie was made for you. Did I just praise this movie? Oh no. The next day, Roxanne goes over and brings muffins with her. And they turn out to be an assault on the senses. You know what else is an assault on the senses? My... Welcome to Ancestors Never Die Incorporated, my bad. So name and time of death, please bye. 
Mom? You saw nothing. Finally, we learn what phase 2 is. And it's as smart as dropping soap in prison. Phase 2 is an ingenious plan I had to launch Metrocity to the moon. <laughs> you serious? With Megamind already having built the rockets, the only thing left to do is launch. Seeing these thrusters just remind me of a movie I'd rather be watching. This movie is pain. So Megamind stalls again by claiming to have forgotten the password to the launch room. Finally realizing something is up with Megamind, they leave and give him an ultimatum. Either we launch by the end of the day, or we level the city. Got it? Megamind realizing he needs Minion, and with a push from Rapsan, heads over to his new job, and upon arrival, realizes Minion is better off where he is now. But obviously, he will be back by movie climax. Megamind heads back to his lair to try and stop the full quarters of Patrick's brain from launching the city. He does manage to get them in the water prison, and to nobody's surprise, it fails since we already saw it do so. Even if we didn't see it before, the sheer amount of gloating Megamind is doing just set him up for failure. And to respond with, It's a prank, bros! has me really wondering who was writing these jokes. The fish guys get rehydrated by a bead of sweat, which opens a whole new can of worms, which I literally do not have the brain power to process. They try to kill Megamind, and Storm from Wish.com thinks she got him. But Megamind pulls a Houdini and goes into hiding. He's later found by Keiko, Minion, and Roxanne, who give him the teamwork making dreamwork speech. Finally, the Suicide Squad breaks into the room to start the launch, while Megamind and company try and stop it. Wondering why I didn't call them Discount or from Wish.com that time? It's because they're both shit. Megamind and Roxanne are to distract the squad while Minion breaks into the lair. Through the events? Is it me or these events are massive? And I see they found the infinite ammo glitch. Minion fails to make it in time and the city is yeeted into near orbit. Okay, this is where I draw the line. This is not how gravity works. And how are you breathing? Do not try to confuse us with science! Suddenly it all makes sense. Leave your brain at the door. The city is falling and they manage to corner Megamind. But these geniuses still argue about being leader. Behemoth wonder if we can put differences aside and find commonality in the ultimate vanquishing of Arch Foe. You are the most inconsistent character I have had the displeasure of seeing this year. Megamind runs away, obviously, and they end up at this construction site. International hire is taken out by cement. <coughs> yeah, the creativity well sure is shallow. Discount Storm is electrocuted, somehow. She's wearing rubber, and what the hell is this? I swear I just want to talk to the writers of this movie. I just want to talk to him. Dad, this is ridiculous! I just want to talk Dad, to him. I Behemoth figure just wait until competition eliminated before squashing through, man. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. That I squish you now. Hey, look over there. Behemoth no fall for oldest trick in the Roxanne is dead, right? Of course not. <coughs> oh, and lastly, discount TJ Miller just straight up gets murdered <coughs> by Keiko. And they stop the city's plummet just in time. <coughs> sure thing, movie. The movie ends with Roxanne winning what was probably the easiest election to become the new mayor. I don't think anybody wanted that job. I mean, would you? Making matters worse, the second piece of the puzzle that made me, a pacifist, choose violence, popped up mid-credits. So this war crime had a mid-credits scene, 
which I initially thought was sequel waiting. But no, my sweet summer child, it's already here and it's an eight episode series which released on the same day. Now, I've never been an advocate for the use of nuclear weapons, but I think this deserves at least a fat man dropped on it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go wash my eyes with bleach. Thank you for watching the video and thank you for making it till the end. I need to get back to this call, so subscribe to help me cure the cancer this movie gave me. I swear I can feel the tumor growing. And if this gets a decent amount of likes, I'll do the sequel, which I'm not looking forward to. Check out these videos over here to continue your YouTube journey and I've been your African NPC. This has been Under the African Sun, and I'll catch you in the next one. Sorry to keep you waiting. What did you say the address was again?